Welcome to our worship service this morning. Good to see all of you here. Our order of service today is found in our worship bulletin, and uh, we're excited to have our uh, number of our musicians participate in today to lead our worship service with special songs. We'll begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I invite you to please rise for the opening sentences. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. Oh Lord, come quickly to help me. Rejoice, your King comes to you. our God praise with our next song, Come, O Come, Let Us Sing to the Lord. We'll sing the song together. us by your strength and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our psalm today will sing um, a, a hymn based on a psalm. We'll sing, My Soul in Stillness Waits, hymn 325. We'll sing it together. Thank you. 
Focus on waiting, waiting patiently for the Lord to come. Isaiah chapter 35, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with a vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A lesson today from the New Testament comes to us from James chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains? You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. A gospel lesson today is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear fine clothes are in the king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? Prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. Christ. This time, uh, 
I didn't ask Timothy this beforehand, but um, Timothy, you play a verse through to give the congregation an opportunity to greet each other. Um, take a moment to greet the brothers and sisters in Christ around you. Uh, thank them for making it here safely. And uh, we'll begin the hymn in, in just a moment. from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, thanks again for making it out on this snowy morning, one of the few big snows uh, of the year, and it's good to see you. In this season of Advent, we're talking about waiting and we're talking about patience. We talked two weeks ago about what it means in the Advent season waiting not just for the celebration of Christmas to celebrate what has happened 2,000 years ago, but also we're looking forward to Jesus returning for the celebration that will never end when you and I are with him in heaven. And as we wait, we do our best to wait patiently, which is not easy. So in order to just get a better understanding of patience, I, I read an article this week uh, from, it was a professor at the University of Washington that was trying to understand what patience is. And his thesis is not that patience is the primary thing and impatience derives its meaning from that word, but it's the other way around. That impatience is the feeling that is primary. And patience is a derivative of impatience. Now, that's a little confusing because it's written by a psychology professor. So we'll, we'll break it down a little bit with some examples here. One of his examples he had was traffic. And what better morning to talk about that, right? In, in order to have patience or in order to be impatient, you need a couple of criteria. One is you need to have a goal. You need to have something that you want that you view as 
valuable. So this morning, you woke up and you said to yourself, I want to go to church. This is what I want to do with my morning. I am going to go there. Now, having that goal, having it be valuable, automatically your mind is going to make an assumption of what that is going to cost you. Well, it's going to cost some time of getting ready for church. It's going to take the time to drive there. And then all the joyous things that we get at worship. Impatience is caused when our goal costs us more than what we thought it would. So you get ready to go to church and you walk outside and the driveway is full of snow. And you think to yourself, do I drive over it now and pay for it later, or do I shovel? So you you shovel, and then you get the car out of the driveway, and you start to move, and you go around the first corner, and you just slide right out. And then you get on La Posada, and you start driving, and there's a pickup truck right behind you, thinking that it's invincible with its four-wheel drive, and there's a 1972 Buick in front of you going nine miles an hour. And all of a sudden, this stress comes into your life of, okay, what do I do here? Do I, I can't go faster, I can't go slower. So these costs keep piling up. You become impatient, frustrated that the thing that you want costs you more than what you thought it would. Now, children don't drive cars often. They shouldn't. But the tough thing about being a kid around Christmas is, What's underneath the tree? Presents, right? It's easy to be patient for Christmas when it's October. There's no tree up. But as soon as you see that present under the tree and it's got your name on it, you think to yourself, I want that. That's mine. And and I'm going to get it. And it's just going to be, right, it's two weeks. 14 days until Christmas is going to be here. And then I get to have that gift and I get to enjoy it. But you wake up the next day and it's not Christmas. And then you wake up the next day and it's not Christmas. And all your mind can think about is those gifts and Christmas is always more than a day away. So when you're a child, it's tough to think of, okay, well, two weeks, it's 13 days, it's 12 days, and so on and so forth. It starts to cost you more and more and more building impatience. So what do we do? When we have impatience in our life, how do we deal with it? Well, the first option we have is figuring out a way to cut the cost, to to make the estimate more in line, or the the reality more in line than what we estimated it to be. So if you're a child, you go and you ask your parents, can I just open one present? Just one today? And if they say no, can I at least have a candy cane? Just... Something that that gets you through to have a little bit now so that the weight is not so bad. If you're an adult driving here, maybe you decide, well, I'm just going to drive over the driveway and hope that the sun melts it. That's why I bought the north-facing house. Or or you think to yourself, well, okay, I'm just going to pull over for a cup of coffee so this pickup truck can pass on by. I'm going to take my time. I might be a little bit late. We, we decide to make the goal worth whatever we're deciding. The other option that we have is to reevaluate. Reevaluate what the goal is really worth to us. Because if it's costing us more, is that cost actually worth what I'm going to achieve? If you're a child and you see the presents under the tree, What do you do to make sure that they're worth it? You give them a little shake. What's inside? Is it the thing that I really wanted? Is it shaped in the box that I thought it would be? We reevaluate all the time the goals that we have. And if they're not worth it, we choose a different goal. We go in a different direction. We pick something that is easier, that we decide is more worth our time and energy and effort and resources. This is what our texts are dealing with this morning. This is what Isaiah is talking about. It's what James is talking about. It's what John sent his disciples to Jesus for. 
John's disciples are looking at John the Baptist in prison. John, this one that was supposed to be the, the, the one that was supposed to prepare the way and, and do all these great, wonderful things, the disciples had dedicated their lives to John, and now their leader is in prison. Why didn't Jesus come and help? Why didn't Jesus free John? Is Jesus really the one we should be following? Is he worth all this effort? Is he worth John, our teacher's life, rotting in prison for? Whether or not John doubted, or whether or not his disciples doubted, if Jesus was worth it or not, isn't really important right now. What's important is what John did. He told his disciples, go ask God. Go ask Jesus. Are you the one or should we expect somebody else? And when they do, Jesus doesn't say yes or no. Jesus quotes a verse from Isaiah. He says that the, hey, look around. The blind see, the lame walk, the mute hear. The one is proclaiming the word of God to all these different places. John would have known that passage of Isaiah. He would have known where this comes from, from, well, they didn't have chapters back then, for, but from the scroll of Isaiah, he would have known the verses just before it that we read about being strong, right? To strengthen the feeble hands and to steady the knees that give way. The picture there of strength is not, you know, to start lifting up something huge or, or begin training. It's used for soldiers in battle. Strength in your hands means grip your sword. Steady your, your, your feeble knees means take a battle stance. To know that the thing we are fighting for is worth it. That I am prepared to go into this fight because I know the weapon that I have. I know the training that I have received. And I know that my general and my king is going to lead us to victory. That's what Jesus tells John and his disciples. To not turn aside, to not disvalue, that's probably not the right word, but to, to lower the value of, of what God has promised to all of them. I am the one. I am worth it. I am the one that you and I should be fighting for. Isaiah talks more about this in Isaiah chapter 50. Um, talks about being instructed. Uh, if we go over to uh, the, uh, James, James uses the example not of battle, but of a farmer, right? Waiting for the rains, waiting for the harvest, doing all the hard work that takes place because the harvest is going to be worth it. Moses had to remind the people of this in, in Deuteronomy as they were wandering around in the desert to continue to instruct your children, to bind the word of God in every single part of your life, to communicate with people about what our God has done. And the reason we bring up all these examples is because every generation of Christian has had to be reminded it's worth the wait. The value that God gives to you and me of everlasting life of unity forever with our God in heaven it's worth it but it costs us it's going to cost us relationships in our life of people that disagree with us it's going to cause us chasing after the earthly pleasures or earthly things that other people around us seem to be having the time of their lives doing but we know that they lead to sin and destruction and away from our Lord. And in our wait for our God, we don't know when he's going to come back. We don't know if we're going to have to wait till the end of our lives or he's going to come back this afternoon. You and I can't fully appreciate, we, we can't value what it's going to cost us. Except that our God says, be prepared. It's going to be your entire life. So for us to realize the value of the goal, the value of heaven, 
for you and I to realize that the cost might be great, you and I, with that idea, we can be patient as you and I wait for the Lord. We will not turn aside. We will not chase after other things that's real. We will not set ourselves going after different goals because we know there's only one gift that God has placed our name on that is worth giving our entire lives to. You can't buy heaven anywhere else. You can't buy heaven anywhere. You can't work for it. You you can't pray your way into heaven. You can't pray someone else into heaven. You can only receive the gift that God has given to you. And he'll open that for you on the day that he has decided. Patience. It's difficult. Costs a lot. But our God and the gifts he has given to you will be worth it. Stay on that path. Don't be impatient. Amen. The peace of our God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds through salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to please rise. We'll continue by praising our God with the You Are God, We Praise You. We'll sing it together. gifts and offerings to the Lord uh, through the offering collection. Do ask that uh, during this time, first take a moment to fill out the connection card found somewhere around you and place in the offering plate as it goes by. And then we'll listen to the offertory song and take a moment to prepare your hearts and minds to receive the Lord's body and blood soon. As Jesus came that Christmas night, so we will come again. 
we wait his advent eagerly, all earth is Bethlehem. Has weary Mary looked and longed for that most holy birth? We all in creation yearn for God's new heaven. Our sinful flesh and blood, so he has robed us in his grace and covered guilt with blood. As Jesus came, Emmanuel, so he will come again and beckon us to newborn bliss and endless life within. As angels sang, the stars awake on that Judean night. They will once again announce the coming of the Christ. As shepherds, poor and lowly men, made haste to find the babe. So we, unworthy as we are, will greet him. in his grace and covered guilt with good. As Jesus came, Emmanuel, so he will come again and beckon us to newborn bliss and endless life with him. As Jesus came that Christmas night, so he will come again. Wait his advent eagerly, all earth is Bethlehem. Dear Lord, we humbly bring these offerings before you and ask that you would use them to your glory. Please take all that we have, our bodies and souls, and help us to proclaim your name so that the whole world may patiently await not the blessings of this earth, but the eternal blessings you have promised for us. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue with the Lord have mercy. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. And we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. At this time, uh, we will have the, Lord, the distribution of the Lord's body and blood. Scripture teaches us that when we have the Lord's Supper, we not only confess to have communion with him, but also communion with those whom we enjoy this meal. Therefore, if you haven't had a chance yet to talk uh, with myself or another Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod pastor about what it means to receive the Lord's body and blood, I ask that you refrain from coming forward until you've had an opportunity to do so. You may be seated. During the distribution, uh, the congregation uh, will sing along with our distribution hymn, hymn 416, When You Woke That Thursday Morning.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Be part of these. Your sins are forgiven. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We walk by faith, hymn 830.
morning. Good to see all of you here today. Hopefully your cars made it here as well uh, this morning without any dents and dings in them. A um, couple quick announcements for you coming up on Wednesday evening. We have the th- uh, third of four Advent worship services with soup beforehand, soup at six o'clock, and then worship at seven. Uh, please join us for that if you can. Uh, if you're unable to make it, we will have it streaming online as well. Following that, we'll have tone chime practice. Then on Saturday morning, uh, starting at 9 a.m., we have our Christmas rehearsal for the children's Christmas service, and that will take place the a week from today. So the 10:30 service next week will be a children's Christmas service here. 8 a.m. service will be a normal worship service, but just a wonderful opportunity next week to have our children uh, lead us with the joy of our Savior's birth. So we're very much looking forward to that. Then, in less than a week after that, it's Christmas already. So Saturday evening, the 24th, we have one worship service uh, for Christmas Eve. That is at 6 p.m. And then the next morning, uh, Sunday morning, Because Christmas Day falls on a Sunday this year, we're having one worship service for Christmas Day that's at 9.30 a.m. So just an opportunity for everyone to get together, um, not have two separate services, but just one to rejoice together and worship our King. So one service on each of those days. Please mark your calendars and looking forward to worshiping with you then. Between now and then, there's plenty of opportunities for fellowship uh, going on. Uh, One of them is immediately after the worship service today. We have a pasta bar today uh, hosted by um, the poor ass. I think I almost gave Larry a heart attack this morning because it was Katie uh, who was hosting his daughter-in-law. But anyway, um, so uh, please join us for, for a meal after the service today. Get to know your brothers and sisters in Christ. And then um, I know there's game night, and and lots of other fellowship opportunities, please look in the bulletin for all of those chances to grow in your relationships with those who worship together with you. I think that's all the announcements. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, After the children's practice, that is when our Christmas for Kids program will be as well. Um, So parents, you'll have almost three hours next Saturday if you need some time out at a local store, because Amazon was not able to give you any, everything you need um, to do, and then children be picked up. I believe it's at noon. That all ends. Please register, though, for the Christmas for Kids so that we have an opportunity to have all the crafts ready for those children. That's all I have. May God uh, bless you, and uh, as long as we're going to have a meal, um, let's uh, pray together. We'll play, pray, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. Sorry, I didn't feel you went on verse 2. Um, but uh, we, we'll enjoy our meal, and thanks to the, the poor ass for providing this, and a special thanks to our musicians this morning for all of their hard work and glorifying their God. May God be with you as you wait his return.